I want to make what Alan Roger Curry refers to as a respectful philosophical disagreement, right? I agree with being direct and upfront with a woman about my sexual intentions, but I do not agree with telling a woman that you only want sex or telling a woman that you want a relationship up front. Not for the reasons that he expresses he disagrees with people for taking a stance with. The reason he expresses disagreement is because some men, some men, they will allow a woman to think that a relationship is possible in order to let the relationship be bait for her to continue sleeping with him. That's not my reasoning. That's not my reasoning at all. My reason for agreeing with being what he considers mode two about your sexual intentions, because, you know, when he says mode one, usually how he breaks it down and, you know, listen, if I'm wrong about how I'm broken it down, I get it. But he says, you know, being mode one, you're being upfront about that. But mode one is being upfront about your sexual intentions and the nature of that, whether that's long term or short term monogamous or non-monogamous sex. So understand what I'm saying. The reason I look at it the way I do is because many women have what I call a gentleman gigolo complex. Just like men have Madonna whore complexes, many women have gentleman gigolo complexes. Neither the gentleman nor the gigolo are necessarily a man who is her dom in life and in the bedroom. Usually it's one or the other. <clears throat> when you go to a woman saying that you want a relationship up front without making those demands clear and you tell her that's what you want, then if you tell her you want a relationship up front, then that woman is probably not going to be too happy about you coming on the back end and telling her all these stipulations that you have. Like, you know what, this is my program. I need you to be doing this, 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 and that. And then, you know, after that, we do that for a period of time, then I'll be okay with a relationship. And that conversation happens a little bit down the line. But also, there's also many women out there that once you tell them that you only want sex, then what they're gonna do is they're gonna shut themselves down emotionally to you. They're gonna limit the non-sexual access that they have to you and that you have to them in order to protect themselves emotionally because they don't see the potential for a relationship. Another thing that can happen is that there are women out there who have this gentleman gigolo complex and they may not even be very, very highly attracted to you, but just the fact that there is no, just the fact that you're upfront about it and that there is no risk of it becoming a long-term situation, she will be happy to have sex with you because there's no hope of a long-term relationship. And in these particular situations, it's one to where you can be sleeping with a woman for months, weeks, years. Now, you can begin to like that woman, right? She may reciprocate. She may do this. She may do that. But what's going on in this situation is that she may be closed off to you emotionally or she doesn't see you as non-sexually attractive enough to desire a relationship with you. So it gives her the ability to spend time around you and to fuck with you without actually being truly feminine and submissive with you overall so this is the thing to understand right so the reason why i believe in being upfront about the sexual intentions is to establish the mutual sexual attraction and compatibility when those things are established that's one of the first things i need to know like part of the reason i don't agree with being upfront about you know and going out of my way to say i only want sex or that i'm looking for a relationship is because i genuinely do not know Based off of my criteria of what it takes for a woman to become my woman, I do not know just by looking at her. I don't know by having a conversation with her. I don't even know by having sex with her the first time. After I've seen that the quality, the quantity, the intensity, the types of sex that we have makes us sexually compatible, then okay, cool. Good. Usually, I have a list of different types of orgasms that go along with that. And after those different types of orgasms are experienced, I'm like, all right, cool. If she's reciprocating, putting time in, she's getting on my program, she's trying to put her bid in, she's campaigning for the position of a, of, of a girlfriend, and she's doing those things just out of her heart, she's just doing those things because she wants to, then start giving a woman instructions, leading her through going through that process of seeing if she can be compatible with your lifestyle. Right, And as that moves forward, as a woman begins to ask about a relationship, then you just let her know what are those other things that you need in order for a relationship to be a possibility with you. See, what happens in a lot of these scenarios is that 
Most people look at it from the perspective of a man manipulating a woman by not telling her what his intentions are up front. I think it's weird if a dude knows as soon as he meets a woman that he wants her to be his next girlfriend or wife. You know, it works out sometimes. That's true. Sometimes you just see something. Sometimes you just know. But I think that in most situations, especially in this day and age, women have to be properly vetted because many women can be chameleons. It takes time to spend with the woman to see if she can be that for you. And I believe that part of that process is a woman say, okay, you know what? A relationship may be possible. So let me behave as such. But with some women, if they don't think a relationship is possible, they're just going to come get the dick from you and then that's going to be it. That's going to be it. I believe this is somewhat what happened in the story that ARC told about, I believe her name was Sharon. You know, he you know was dealing with her for a while. He started getting a little bit sexually jealous along the way. And then as he started getting a little bit sexually jealous and he started liking her, then he wanted to be in a relationship with her. And when he wanted to be in a relationship with her, she said, one, you're promiscuous. And two, you don't make enough money for me. Now, when you go about situations by being mode one about your sexual intentions and saying you only want sex, then you have to protect yourself as well as her by displaying a certain level of emotional discipline to avoid catching feelings. But my issue is with this. I don't believe in actively seeking a relationship. I don't believe in that. You know, to be my housewife, you got to be my hoe first. Because the name of the game over here at, at Blur Pill Reacts or, you know, you know, Blur Pill Rants, Brody Dharma, the name of the game here is sexual integration, which means taking that Madonna aspect and that whore aspect and mixing those together, taking that gentleman aspect and that gigolo aspect and mixing them together. And it's just an order that those things are done in. So I don't believe in separating women and say, OK, well, this woman is relationship material and this woman's not. What's the criteria that you're choosing up front? You know, for the most part, after you reach a certain level in your game, I don't even believe in wanting to sleep with a woman who has no capacity, who I'm not attracted enough to, that if she gets with my program, I wouldn't be open to a relationship. But I have to see how her mental health is. I have to see how her domestic skills are. I have to see if she can get with my program. I have to see if, if our life goals and those different things line up. And I can't do that in the first conversation. All I can do in that first conversation is see if the mutual sexual attraction is there after that confirm it with the compatibility after that's confirmed with the compatibility then it's a process pacing it out seeing where that woman's mindset is at on different things you know uh influencing her seeing where her social programming is at and her beliefs and it takes time because often when you're just only engaging in casual sex a woman will put you into the only sex category if that woman's social programming says that she doesn't really truly believe in casual sex then she will put you into a category to where she just sees you as a placeholder she sees you as someone who she's just having sex with for the time being to get her rocks off and if you're a man who has that same mentality with women that's cool but the goal here is integration i don't believe in saying okay well i'm gonna have all this casual sex with all these different women and then as soon as i find a woman who i think is relationship material then i'm going to treat her different and say right from the jump that i want a relationship i don't agree with that because that one woman who you come across who you think is relationship material she may be more promiscuous than all of the other women that you've come across without even telling you so i just i don't i don't agree with that aspect of it this is a respectful philosophical disagreement uh you know this is in response to alan roger curry's last video about uh he was talking about a uh, non-verbal no he was talking about uh how different archetypes the five archetypes of women react to men being mode one versus mode two and the thing to think about this is like this when it comes to women giving their responses about what it is that they desire of course a woman is going to say well if a dude's mode two he makes me think that he may want a relationship right well check this out the thing about it is this a lot of times women get into their social programming and the social programming is more than just what hinders a woman from being sexual Social program is what hinders a woman from being feminine and submissive with a man in and outside of the bedroom. So a woman can be sexually attracted enough to you on a purely sexual level to be willing to be submissive with your plans sexually with her while having no intentions of being attracted to you on a non-sexual level that's high enough for her to want to be feminine and submissive with you outside of the bedroom. And another woman can be 
overall attracted to you like uh overall attraction which is including your your money your career your social status your looks on paper but she could have a tepid or lukewarm sexual interest to you but because you're giving her that energy as if you want a relationship up front by telling her that that's what you want that woman may be willing to trade sex for love right she's willing to trade sex for love because the thing about it is this there's the madonna and the whore the whore she does you know people see it as having transactional sex short-term transactional sex and sometimes that transaction can just be <clears throat> i don't have to worry about the feelings i don't have to worry about the emotions i don't have to worry about uh, the long-term ramifications of dealing with this individual so I'm just sleeping with this individual because I don't have to worry about the pressure of what what comes with dealing with somebody long term and sometimes a woman will have transactional sex with a man about long-term relationships and marriage where I may not be fully sexually attracted but this man will provide for me and one thing that people don't bring up enough is that emotional security is the new transaction that's the new payment for pussy is social validation and emotional security validation oftentimes you don't even have to have money for a woman to use you a woman can have transactional sex with you merely for the prospect of feeling that you're emotionally close to her so a big part of my ideology the biology first approach of sexual integration is alleviating and taking away a woman's ability to have transactional sex for any reason you know, I have sex with me for a relationship because the sex is not going to move me. It's just that it's important that we have compatibility. And I want to have sex, you want to have sex. By not having a relationship on the table up front, what that does is that gives a woman the opportunity to grow that desire. But you're also not going to use me as, as a fuck buddy, as a fuck toy either. You're not going to come into my life to want to have just casual sex with me and think that you're going to be able to deal with me only sexually and never reciprocate never spend your own money never take your time to show your interest to never campaign that doesn't work either because my program is not about just how do I get a woman to have sex with me and my program is not just about how do I get a, a relationship the program is about how do I integrate this woman how do I take this woman to get her to tap into her sexuality beyond her social programming and then begin to integrate the non-sexual traits, what Alan Roger Curry would refer to as alpha traits uh, or alpha male beta traits, how to integrate those beta male traits into things that can either sustain and maintain the previous level of sexual attraction or that those things can add to the sexual attraction and respect. Because it's about respect and desire. When inside of my ideology, I call it good dick and guidance. Right? Good dick and guidance. Those are two of the key tenets that when it comes to creating those naturally submissive and masculine feminine dynamics between a man and a woman so this is just uh i don't have a whole lot of disagreements with alan roger curry i do not uh this is one of them but i think also the thing to understand is that uh integration is something that can happen just like a lot of men have madonna whore complexes one time he had a video and i'm gonna probably make a video talking about this but he had a video where he was talking about how women don't want men who are promiscuous either those are women who have gentleman gigolo complexes most women that i've encountered they knew about my promiscuity and it did not hinder them from wanting to be in a relationship with me if i approached them in a way where i didn't give them the option of just saying well he's only sex so it's cool or he wants a relationship up front so there, there's different levels to it i would say that you know, some of those things that are considered double standards about men's views about sexuality and, and women's views about sexuality, certain things seem like the double standards, but they're not as much double standards. And not for the reasons of insecurity or because of what other people think, but because of what people value. Like a man is going to be, like a man is oftentimes not going to be more sexually attracted to a woman just because other men are sexually attracted to her. Not a masculine man, but a feminine woman will often try to bypass having to experience desiring a man for herself by knowing that other men want her i mean by knowing that other women want that man so this is just response video uh hope alan roger curry gets to see this i love your content i watch it all the time but 
instead of coming with the same old arguments that everybody else does when it comes to their disagreements, I want to approach this from a different angle.